Hello, everyone. My name is Ivy from Quest, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Reconnect Dive Deep session entitled, You Have Arrived. Now what? Need a pathway to cloud success beyond implementation? I have a few reminders before we get started. Attendees will remain muted throughout the session. However, if you'd like to be unmuted to ask a question, use the raise hand feature. A Quest staff member will give you permission to speak at that time. Attendees can also type their questions into the Q&A module in your Zoom toolbar. We will also I'm sorry, we will address any questions at the end of the session. At this time, I will turn things over to our speaker, Global Transformation Leader, Pramod. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, one second. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I think you guys had a busy day. Thank you for your time, for participating in the, in the webinar to kind of go through the journey we what we have gone through with our observations on the field uh, with uh, going through this once we have the implementation, then what's next? A lot of executives and the leadership have been asking about uh, with further ado, I, I would like to start this. So, uh, so basically, again, um, I've been doing this for, uh, for, for almost 30 years and uh, I've seen the evolution of ERP as we all been a part of it throughout our journey in our, in our careers. And uh, we have three, three or four evolutions around it, but the cloud is the ultimate stop and it's gonna be a continuous progression, but it gives a different methodology and mindset. We have to help our businesses to grow with it because of the dynamic situations we have in the marketplace right now. And again, this is uh, thanks for your participation and we would like your feedback and your evaluation so we can make our uh, future uh, webinars much better based on your feedback. I uh, appreciate your time on that. If you're taking a few minutes after. And then being said that, uh, uh, who are we? Where well, we are data realize been uh, doing this, uh, helping the customers to maximize their investments on their assets, whether it's an ERP on-prem application or just in the cloud infrastructure side or are basically transform building business transformations to to the cloud SaaS products uh, in respect of that. So we do the strategy to execution alignment with our customers, whether it is an IT or whether it is a business or whether it is a leadership standpoint. We've been doing this for over two decades. And again, um, one of the biggest things basically as we have all of us have gone through is through the journey is we have to make a decision around to go to cloud. So what type of cloud, how much of the cloud is cloud could be many things to many people. Cloud could be taking infrastructure to the to the cloud providers, just the infrastructure side of the story, but the functionality remains the same. It's nothing but on-prem in the cloud with less less control, more, more ability and other aspects of it, but that's not what we are here for. We are here for the Oracle actually has a, a path for all this uh, uh, on-prem customers, were, especially in the Oracle ecosystem, when they started acquiring like 15 years ago, whether it's the PeopleSoft, J.D. Edwards, JD Edwards e EBS, or Hyperion, or any of them, but uh, right around 2001, 2002, they came with a strategy saying, how do we fuse everything together? That's where the, the fusion application stack, we call it as our SaaS, cloud SaaS, kind of come through. Most of the customers have gone through, started onboarding on onto the platform aggressively since 2015, 16. Before that, it was certain type of business functions went in, but right around that 16, 17, when, when, and, 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 and beyond as the functionality maturity started coming through, a lot of customers have um, joined the bandwagon and started realizing the value to stay current, to stay appraised of it, and also to make sure to align with the best practices the platform provides. But a lot of these guys went in with, at that time, saying, I want quick, I want speed, and I had the cost. So as a result, we made some compromises and stuff, but we have left unrealized what the opportunities are. So again, that is where most of the executives are. So we invested in a platform where that we gonna be now, what else we have not seen it because because of the nature. I, as I go through this journey and in the slides, you'll know exactly what what, uh, what sets a mind. But again, uh, being said that, the dilemma which is we invested in cloud SaaS and we ended up into this <clears throat> platform, 
what are the KPIs or advantages and the kind of stuff we have bought into and what else we have, we can leverage or take advantage of it to get that extra mileage out of the investment and beyond for uh, process improvements, which was a little limitations for us when we were on-prem. It's, it's basically when you are in a heavy customized world or uh, do purpose-built purpose -built implementation to meet your business needs are, but when we come to cloud, we just have to go through a unified model about to align with the best practices. There is an opportunity to look at some customers are looking at operationally how efficient are we versus some look at the financial side of the story of visibility. And, and then the last but not least is how are we continuously evolving around with the, with the platform because that is becoming your challenge and the investment because you invested in a, in a platform which is evolving constantly. And also, if you're in the service industry, you're mostly around the, how we get our customer experience going with the latest and greatest tools to with the information availability. So these are some of the things what executives are thinking when they meet uh, on, a, on a vision about when we have to lay a strategy for the next few years, uh, how are we going to look at what, what the platform can be, provide us that ability. Being said that, and, and then, and then, what are the things to consider basically and in the conversation comes out of it, let's do something about it. So what are the things to consider basically is one, during the implementation, we based on the time crunch and the and the cost aspects of it is to the need for speed. We might have compromised on certain things. Now this is the time to look at revalue saying that the best practices are based on your industry and based on the target to kind of look at it where your opportunities for optimization are, and, and eventually, how are we empowering as an organization, looking at, from a business perspective, uh, providing information on on uh, on time, and then basically delivering what need is, and how do we scale with it? Because suppose if you buy a company, how soon are we doing the merger and acquisition aspects of it, and, and how often we are investing ourselves, looking at Oracle Roadmap and say that, hey, this was the customization we did in legacy and this is the compromise we did in cloud because functionality was not there. Now functionality got enriched what we what are we thinking about right now? So because these are some of the self, uh, I would call it adjustments or self-realizations has to happen to stay current so that we don't run out of uh, the challenges we used to have in the past. And then the next part is how do we de-risking it? Because not every the platform was built to kind of sustain or, or to, to kind of cater to various industries and uh, with, with platform has been the baseline for it. But during that process, if you are if you're in a hospitality industry or if you're in, a, in, a, in an energy distribution or if you're in a, in, a, in a consumer goods or if you're in a, in a retail or wholesaler kind of model, you always have a challenge around some customizations were given with the, with the new tool sets and kind of situations. But being said that the reason we have to do that was to kind of uplift ourselves coming out of legacy ERP, which is on-prem into cloud. But are we going to continue doing that or are we going to continue to empower ourselves to the next level? The second aspect of it, there are some of the, <clears throat> some of the functionalities started back in early 2005, six. And uh, because of the architectural definition, Oracle itself is also looking at saying that how long we're going to sustain. There are a few times in the last uh, ten, five years, Oracle has changed the architecture really behind the scenes without, uh, without being any impact to the customers. Also reaching out, they're overreaching to the customer saying, hey, you have implemented certain functionality. You're going to be end of life. You're going to continue or are you going to realign? So these are some of the things and, and, and every quarter release about the new functionality has been loaded up how much are we leveraging that functionality to kind of align with it? Because they started with 30% availability in 2016, 17, 18. Now it's 100%. How are we going back and trying to change our bad practices or trying to realign our expectations? And the new thing right now, everybody's talking about with AI, advent of AI and everything is all about hyper automation. How do we make some of these repetitive things go basically are automated with 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 humans still will be the QA aspects of it and how intelligently we can do the process automation to keep the aligned for, for our businesses to kind of sustain and continue so that we we will be the, the the new era of looking for the next possible way of saving time saving money and increasing the value of the investments these are some of the things and and 
last but not least, don't uh, don't undermine what platform is already built to capable of with the recent announcements of, of there is already foundational pipelines laid in for AI and ML. Depending on the usage in your industry, there is all you guys are either a part of the beta program or you may be already using it. But there's a lot more coming up for us to use. It's uh, it's up to use and and continue with this and we just have to do not discount that ability we have in hand without having to buy extra tool set and then as i said we have to constantly look at best practices and we have to de-risk for the situation and eventually thrive with the automation that's how we keep our business stakeholders and customer side if you're an it organization and if you're a business leader you need to look for saying how do i make sure get that data-driven intelligence to an, an automated so i don't have to call someone in the middle of the night and these are some of the challenges and on the maintenance aspects of it we have to have an opportunity to look for so basically we at dataville over the years have looked at uh, all these factors and all the scenarios um we we were basically done of several uh, different layers of engagements where we strategize to see where you will be based on your vision and kinds of stuff and uh, multiple strategies are applied and then where you're going to be. And uh, and then eventually once you've already implemented, like you're in already three years into it, I did not get the ROI. That's when we go back and look at it and start working to align and see all one of those segments, whether it's best practices or stuff. So again, this is our methodology to look for health and provide you. And again, Oracle, as I said, just going to give you an idea, was built around this modern best practices. Legacy ERPs were built, and then uh, we were trying to fix the legacy ERP towards the best practices. But when uh, the, the the whole cloud ERP SaaS model started coming in, we started building, they started building with, with the baseline of best practices and start aligning again. It is a comprehensive how, and very much uh, working with the customers, their social inputs are coming from customer uh, connect and they were able to do. Again, again, look at these uh, situations and you apply these templates and see where we are. And then, then we need to come up with a strategy. We need to engage our stakeholders and eventually align with where you're going to be and where the value, the maximized value would be and review constantly to make sure that we are not... Uh, constant review on both sides, review with what we need versus do we have it in our bag or we need to wait for Oracle strategy roadmap to align with it for the review to tell, to put, it's a program from here on. Basically, once you're live, it's a constant improvement. Uh, it's a continuous improvement and constant uh, infinite possibilities. And we need to leverage the enterprise architecture to align because I know a lot, not many organizations have invested into enterprise architecture, but uh, again, if you don't have, but again, with the platform, we have an end-to-end visibility. There is an opportunity there to get some uh, timely advice around where we should be with, with, without having to have a full-time person kind of situation. And working with business, working with leaders, working with the growth in the industry, we just have to define which is measurable KPIs because uh, this is very important. If I don't measure, we cannot even show the value of success there, that those kind of stuff we are looking at. Um, again, th- this is how we can engage uh, in multiple places to come up with the roadmap, which is a program rather than a project. Uh, and also b- bunch together uh, a lot of uh, these features to, to come up with the process alignment. And then once you have that whole roadmap and the program, then we need to look at saying, how do we communicate? We just have to communicate top down and every layers have to be. And it's constant, constantly awareness, empowerment, and also the involvement. These, these are the three things that are important for us because um, having them through the journey, not necessarily has to be dead every 100%, but you have to have the right pockets to have the consensus and involvement. We will know exactly the where the, we need to bring the business into counterparts and, and eventually their input is very good. Communication is the key. Communicate, 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 and eventually provide them uh, constant feedback uh, periodically and see where we are. And Because every business goes through a busy season versus uh, basically goes through a certain time of uh, uh, no availability zones. We just have to work through as a program management or, from our, or the business uh, leaders. They have to work through and take the feedback constantly. So 
do not assume but validate on a, uh, uh, when you have a tie when, when we have to look at the tiebreaker when you assume certain things and and when they, when we when we analyze that and optimize that they will say come back and say this is not what i meant so we just have to be very careful on that because constant pivoting is important but then doesn't necessarily mean all hack cannot be assumed you just have to validate and be, being said that again as i said these are some of the things that are very important because what customers are realizing or not have not realized is they they bought into a kind of a the kind of a ferrari of the of the of the erp erp kind of saas model because it's constantly evolving and growing that the nearest competitors whichever be the competition but as long as it aligns with to gives you the compliance security and scalability and also the, the competency in the market to grow fast and uh, actually and this 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 platform can give us an endless potential opportunities for us to grow again that the reason i have to depict this is to say that they always see you you heard the analogy that uh, oracle is like a ferrari jet but i don't have to drive it but i just have to understand the potential aspects of it to leverage it but you have it with you the keys to that uh, power and opportunities but it is as as an organization leaders and the influencers and as well as decision makers have to look at saying what else can i do fine tune it to make sure we get best out of the investment we did this is ultimately what most of the executives are uh, envision state basically is where they're investing time and resources are maybe the first first off the block in the very first uh, go live we did because we have to go live or we did because we know what the what compromises we made but what happened after that after that we have to constantly look at and say that where are these functionality growth enrichments are happening and basically how does it help us or if in we have to spin off a subsidiary or a part a new 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 company out of it as a merger and come acquisition to grow how does it all fill in so this basically is what most of the most of the organizations are basically looking for as a connected product so that you have uh, everything connect uh, connected information connected people and connected technology aspects and again being said that again how we how we look at it is is uh, these are some of the snippets i'm putting together since 2018 only because i could have gone back but but 2018 is where most stable uh, version came in with to uh, that the to release 12 to release 13 kind of a uh, hopper went through but Uh, the hop went through that's where most of the stability has accomplished again previously it financials was good hcm was there but but supply chain was evolving and the sales and service was evolving but uh, and projects and and the epm were already there as well but to the limitations what it has but but beyond this 2018 is what we call it as as before 2018 and after if you have, if you are a customer you have gone live before 2018 you've been already gone through a couple of uh, so, uh hops basically to get through that and um, oracle has taken care of all of us very careful to make sure we're not going to have any loss of service with their utmost due diligence but that is only just on the technology side but now what happened after that is there's a load of new functionalities been then these these are some of the examples in the financials we just have to look at and say how how much of these are in use or could be a potential candidate for identifying an opportunity but not necessarily this is just just a high, high level uh, top 10 i took just to give an idea about financials but there are much more and it's evolving and eventually there is also at the next stage is these are some other things about supply chain I, uh, most of the organizations have a piece of supply chain or full supply chain depending on what ecosystem you serve depending on uh, where in the ecosystem you are a critical uh, manufacturing or whether distribution or anything like that but again they there is a, if you are in a service industry there's a lot more has evolved versus the legacy aspects of it and there's also a lot of artificial intelligence especially demand signals and all other artifacts and intelligence are there data is available for us to collaborate with our partners with ease with the latest technology and um, with your feedback even oracle is taking that feed in and trying to optimize that platform to scale as well and then again the, this are some of those uh, supply chain related stuff at the high level then then you have hcm i think this is one of the one of the things where it is uh, it's becoming quite evident around a lot of participation from 
from people like you guys are as on the call and and the technologists <clears throat> working with business users and communicating the use cases to the oracle they started with a, a with a scale of use cases and now they are they're enhancing it because as the needs are and some of these new things are relating to the listening from the customers the voice of the customers and social and the voting aspects of it and they have done tremendous work in the last since 2018 is to get customer a lot of experience if you have already implemented in 18 if you have not implemented some of these you just it is an opportunity for us to go look at it to give that experience for our internal and external customers these are some of the hcm related and then and then there's a, there's a major things happening in in the, in the sales and the service side because of the customer experience and and especially the the asset management aspects of it because there are some organizations have uh, basically inception to retirement aspects of it, but they need to make sure with the advent of subscription models, with the advent of IOTs, with the advent of others, service has become a, a big, bigger portion of uh, larger organizations to learn as a connected product uh, so that engineers are getting the feedback pretty much as near real time and eventually building the products much more efficiently. On the other side, there's a digital twins and there's a third part is remote when you are deployed, some of these devices are assets remotely, the monitoring and provide delivering the stuff so they keep the uptime. That is also a new business model available for service providers. But again, as I said, uh, there are some of the areas are the scalable in uh, basically, I would call infinite possibilities, but these are some of the features giving us that edge for the customers to start building new products and services and eventually get them through. Um, then the, the, the next one is there are some examples I'm going to give just in a couple of examples, but there are many, but I just want for relevancy. I just want to kept it because a customer of ours and the, the, the very first one was hospitality. They took a leap of faith strategy from, from an EBS uh, 11, 5, 10, and they went to, <clears throat> they went to cloud directly because they don't, they, they passed the 12, 12 series, the EBS kind of a uh, hopper. They don't want to go there 1213, but they want to go to cloud because that, that product was end of life at the time and beyond a stretch for support. And uh, it took at least uh, two to three years for them to stabilize because of very early stages of implementation because of a lot of functionality was not fully baked in for their business model. But right around 2018, when uh, the 13 came through, they started getting the time back and and eventually we will apply because this is one of those organizations. They are a nonprofit business model, a corporate owned inventory till the point of consumption. And there's a lot of complexity about product moves, but for cost does not, cost is a pass through and track and trace is important. And also the, uh, they do it, and also have some jurisdictional taxes. And they also are like an Amazon for the business model doing all this, the functionality to, they are, uh, uh, they are the they are the procurement guys and also consumers right because it's because it's in a in a, in a regular commercial world you have a buy and a sell in this case there is all internal consumption but they want to hold till the the point, title transfer till the point of consumption in the end uh, uh, two steps down the line so again as a result you have some tax implications and these are one of those first customers who had uh, ad early adapters of third party tax solution and uh, and and also it did not go well with a non profit because you have to do it uh, most of them they buy is they self assessed versus uh, vendor charged and the second aspect around it is uh, they also have some uh, the point of sale type of application at the point of consumption points and uh, how do we track back all uh, the the trail back of all accounting and netting and you know tax reporting and liabilities and expense audit and all kinds of stuff. These are all uh, some of the things we went through. And uh, since they are in a in a hospitality, they are going to go through some layer costing. It has it has its own implications. They have dual unit or major challenges. All these things were there when Oracle has worked with us very closely to come up with a solution or come up with a narrative in a way that, okay, the functionality will be available two to three releases from now. So we came up with a short-term solution. When, when that feature came through, 
it became automatically come back to the to the to the mainstream aspects of it. So we were innovative, working with Oracle, work with the customer to make sure uh, gain the efficiency around it and go through. Again, it was it was a lot of uh, <clears throat> ebbs and flows and a lot of aspects of it. But as a result, they actually going to cut back a lot of uh, challenges around auditing aspects of it, tra- trail back through when, it, when there is a tax audit or tax planning and tax reporting aspects of it. And they also have the other visibility, which was tough and saving a lot of money, a lot of time for the business users to chase the paper trail. So again, that's one of the challenges we were, with. this was, as I said, they went live in 16. They didn't realize, but 2018, 19, they started thinking it was a huge program put together, but, Time was not right enough till 2022 because functionality was not there. Till then, we were doing some proof of concepts, validating our assumptions, working with Oracle, work aligning with the product load maps. The second scenario, basically, as you see, is is one area of a deficit a lot of this people have is <clears throat> is the manual processes. And this customer basically has not, not a lot more than that because they have a lot of uh, invoice automation, but they want to go to the point of... Uh, Point for the person who's submitting also has to code. This is one of the biggest problems they had, and um, there are close to four or five hundred coders uh, on the field. There was a lot of challenges around saying, "Can we do sh- rationalize? Uh, we have OCR and we have IDR, but it is not working out because if I don't have a PO, your your distribution or account coding becomes a challenge, and you're li- dealing with some kind of an expenses you have to record without a PO because they're contract based." Invoices coming through, there's no PR aspect. But again, looking at some of the redundancies, some of the opportunities, and some of the the solutions Oracle has given, uh, they decided to have uh, an ability for uh, using the the low code uh, the low code platform abilities. What Oracle has to extend beyond beyond the ERP functionality is still the same. It's only the data capture aspects of it is the enhancement we did with validation and stuff. And then that way the AP department doesn't have to chase any of the exceptions or run through the field and kinds of scenarios. And they were able to save a lot of time and a lot of money. But here the challenges were the decision about the car, whether you have a centralized coding or, 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 or a decentralized coding, what kind of guidelines we have tolerances we have and kinds of stuff for the account code so they don't need to know everything but everything is driven by their uh, their type of transactions and other attribution aspects of it the second aspect of it the the whole platform which we were trying to leverage was like gone through three generations right now it's getting much better now but back in the day ability of tools were there but you know we got too many moving wheels in that situation so we said we won't dust get needs to be settled, then we'll stay there till it gets uh, stable stabilization aspects of it. Then we went in and eventually on top of it, when you are in, in an industry like this, uh, every information is security is important for us about who does what, when and how. And I think that's where we were able to do again. Again, these two customers, I just took an example because the business really wants to be driving that stuff and they want to be the one who is very excited and motivated to get deliver the value aspects that's all they said they don't want to be there what they have been always been doing but they want to do something innovatively because the platform has ability and as a technologist and as a, as an advisors we were able to provide them that you know the, the cushion the the scalability and and then now they are they're uh, they're leveraging the the efforts of success and improving their efficiency in um what are the things we need to basically avoid in the roadmap we just basically we can we we have to look at saying that what is right enough um, how how pl- planning is very important for us because as i said it's a program we just have to plan depending on your need value and other, other scenario and availability and 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 uh, delivering the value in packets rather than a full ba- big bang then question is the uh, the stakeholder engagement the stakeholder has to be highly motivated and the driver of this success because uh, they are the ones that are ultimately going to get the value out of this and, and and eventually having everyone from the businesses on the room to kind of go uh, whether you're uh, uh, on the top of the uh, uh, of the food chain in the process or in the middle or in the end but they all have to work together and say what is their ultimate priority as a, it's like bringing a congress to to vote for it for an alignment and eventually we we want to we don't want to over-analyze it and our sell 
<laughs> this KPI says kind of stuff. And also on the other side, we don't overlook the what Oracle's transformation strategy would be <laughs> on the product roadmaps by looking constantly, listening to the to their announcements and kinds of stuff and have bring them to the clarity to the business. And then, and also we have to balance execution. As I said, <laughs> we don't want to over oversell it and under deliver, which is how to undersell it and over deliver and constantly improve the value for it. And then <laughs> that's one of the biggest things we always have in the first time go was the user adoption because uh, change management is always key. It's always constantly improving because uh, expect the unexpected. We don't know what we don't know when we started. We know what the functionality is. We don't know what the what would be the user adoption is because um, before we used to have a different type of, uh, uh, of user experience versus now. And now you have a more, a, a, you can work from anywhere. And some other times we were told that this is not out of the box during the implementation time, but, but they were not given options. Sometimes because we don't have options, right? Sometimes we have options, but business says, oh, I don't like this because it takes five steps, but have to customize kind of a data enrichment kind of situation. But because uh, business before it was three steps, now it's five steps kind of at our situation. And then, then, and then uh, looking at it, uh, we either went for a big bang, and also sometimes we will go with the scalability aspects of it. You go one layer at a time with coexistence, and eventually, uh, kind of scenario. Now you, now you got to the point when everybody's on board. Uh, we can start leveraging. And the, the last but not least was when we did the assessment and plan to migrate the very first time was Oracle certain modules will certain processes were left over because Oracle was not mature enough at the time, but now they are. So again, uh, again, same problem with that and how do we plan to get the, that part of the business to be aligned with the future strategies instead of doing that whole data dump into the multiple places and getting the value out of it. <laughs> so being, being, being said that, I think um, it gives us a lot of imagination for us to kind of go through uh, because uh, we have to imagine what will happen or we have to imagine what else can be done. We have to, we have to constantly push ourselves to the limit and basically see what Oracle can do, what we already have. And based on that, we go through a constant pursuit of uh, excellence, uh, you know, by trying and also working closely with uh, the Oracle uh, because now you have a platform which is growing. Uh, at a constant, uh, a very, very rapid pace with innovations and stuff. And also you're, by the time you realize you already have it, we, we have to start thinking about what is the right time for you as an organization to uh, take advantage of it. Um, again, uh, I would uh, take a pause here and any any questions, uh, Ivy, uh, I'll uh, get back to you on it. Ivy? Um, no questions at the moment. Okay. <clears throat> so I think um, uh, this is uh, this is some of the journey and the opportunities we have been uh, going through and trying to put together some challenges and opportunities we have we can leverage with the with the with the platform and ability and. Hope oh, oh, this could be helpful. And if you had any, if you have any questions, uh, I'm open uh, to answer. Or, or 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 we can or or we can reach us um, basically on a on the data well side, and we will be able to engage with you to have a detailed conversation. Because I know it's it's an hour. We cannot boil the ocean, but I just kept enough for us to kind of give you an idea about <clears throat> what are the opportunities we either have. We are not looking at it and um, trying to find new solutions with knowing what you have an asset sitting on top. So being said that, um, I'll give you more minutes, Ivy, for any questions for the open floor. Sounds good.
I think um, it looks like uh, thank you all for your time. <clears throat> when you get a chance, please provide your feedback and uh, have a uh, nice rest of the sessions you have for the rest of the day and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Pramod. You have a wonderful day. <laughs> thank you.